I'm really good. I'm going to start doing that more often. <laughs> Just like a fucking... <laughs> that felt good. Yeah. Damn. Okay, uh, this song, um, okay, let's do it. Alright, so, <laughs> well, that I got, let, me just, let, me, let me just get straight with you guys. <laughs> this is like co coach's position. <laughs> um, this is super comfortable, actually. <laughs> uh, no, um, I wrote this song as I did all of these. Uh, but this one was a little weird. Here's the thing about songs for me is uh, if you care, um, songs either are like this, uh, I don't know, they live like, they live independent of me in a way. Uh, they are like of me, they are like kind of, you know, I don't like when people say it's my baby. I feel like that's always a little weird, like just have a baby. Um, <laughs> But like, it, it does kind of feel like you created something, but it also can live independently. And what I mean by that is uh, it can evolve like on its own time. And there's been so many times that I've written a song and I was like, I don't know what the hell that's about, but it feels right. And then like literally it'll be like a year or so later, maybe six months. Sometimes it's been three years on, on a couple songs where it really, really made sense to me. Um, and I understood completely why it was written and why I trusted the fact that maybe like the song goes more about itself than you do at the time of creation. Uh, and that has to grow. That there's sometimes you grow it by performing it on stage for you know a new audience or like they, they've never heard it before or whatever. Uh, I used to write a lot of songs on stage because sometimes they were just like they were just full grown immediately. Um, and that hasn't happened like in a while because with my life patterns changing, like my writing had to change, my sense of creativity and my, my creative center um, was moved around quite a bit, you know? Uh, a bunch of screws were, were knocked loose and I had to kind of go in there aside from the creative side of myself to go and fix those things behaviorally, um, intentionally, all that good stuff to be a better man and human being for myself to move around. Yeah. And that was fantastic, but then when it came back, time to create, um, the muscle seemed, it didn't atrophy, but it was like I had to utilize a different situation. And once I got used to that, it felt um, like I had, uh, I had gained some, some form of power as far as expressing myself. And I've always stood by the fact that I literally feel so lucky like that there's three people that listen to my music. There's... You know, when you go and you play in front of a thousand people, it's like unbelievable to me. Or like when it's a hundred, like it doesn't matter to me because at the end of the day, if I was working on a horse farm, which was my dream, uh, <laughs> maybe I will someday, who knows? But I would write the same songs, I'd say the same things, and um, and I would appreciate uh, the fact that I do feel lucky that I can I can give myself free therapy a lot of times because songwriting is a way for me to make sense of the world. But I don't think that you have to say anything really profound or even create a song. Like, I do believe that art can make you lean into being a better person if you want to make it authentically. And it doesn't have to be anything special. It could be something that just means something to you, that means something that came from in here. Anyways, uh, that can spring up in your life at any time. And uh, there was, when I, when I, uh, I, I moved to, to a house, this old house, um, outside of Nashville. Uh, during the pandemic, I'd just gotten divorced. All my friends were, uh, you know, we're all not together. Um, I was single at the time. My dad has rheumatoid arthritis. I couldn't see him because of autoimmune disease. My sister was going through like a horrible divorce. Uh, and my brother was in Chicago. It was just like, I know that's not special and unique to everyone that in this room that's dealt with, you know, what the pandemic was. Uh, but I, I decided that like, for me to really re-understand who I am and who I am as a creator, that I had to step away from all of the things that told me who I was and how I used to create. And I bought this very old house. Um, I don't know if that was a mistake, but, uh, <laughs> You know, it was like very much like the notebook situation. I was like, you know, working on this house, like not shaving. And uh, 
I didn't know how to address what was happening in my life at the time, and I started writing a song about it. And it just felt like it was too, I didn't know how to say it yet. And so anyways, I wrote all the songs for this record in that house, and the story is going somewhere. <laughs> and I'm still standing like this. Uh, but I, the day before I was supposed to leave um, for, to make, to make the record, the, the, the first time that this has happened in that house and also in a very long time, a song woke me up out of bed and was like, write me right now. And I had tried to write it when I first moved there and I just like couldn't. And I was like, this song, this song suck, am I terrible? And then the day before I was supposed to leave, it all came out at once. And I'd, I'd like to play it for you. It's the last track on the record. Yeah. <laughs> 